Jubilee party has had its way in as far as the electoral rules are concerned, but the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy is having none of it. We'll tell you what the next cause of action will be. Good evening and welcome to KTN Prime on this Thursday, the 22nd day of December. There's two more days to go to Christmas. My name is Sophia Wanuna. Our sign language interpreter tonight is Meresha Owiti. Let's have a look at our top stories. We have no option but to take the invitation by Jubilee to go back to the streets for a very peaceful, decisive mass action. Brace yourselves for another round of confrontations. Court now calls for mass action to protest the latest electoral law reforms. Court walks out of Parliament as Jubilee MPs pass controversial amendments to electoral laws. More agony awaits patients. Private hospitals now join the ongoing doctor's strike. And President Uhuru Kenyatta receives two names of nominees to head the REBC. We begin with the opposition court has called for mass action starting January the 4th next year to protest Jubilee lawmakers' passage of contentious amendments to the elections laws that were enacted in September. The opposition says the changes by the ruling Jubilee administration is a recipe to steal the general elections slated for August the 8th, 2017. The changes to the laws will now allow for the manual identification of voters as well as manual transmission of results in case the electronic system fails. Patrick Amimo begins our bulletin tonight. Will as many as that opinion say aye? Aye! An apparent change of heart from Jubilee on the election laws is now likely to roll back the country to street battles in the new year. It is unavoidable. It is engineered. It is what Jubilee have asked for. And we have taken the date of January the 4th to start this action. Kama itakuwa ni uchaguzi, itakuwa ni uchaguzi ambaye hakuta kuwa na wizi. Sisi tumesema kama tutashindu wa tutakubali. Lakini hatuwezi kuenda kuchaguzi kuhalalisha wizi ya kura. For two days, Members of the National Assembly from the ruling Jubilee and their counterparts in the opposition engaged in a supremacy battle as the government side attempted to push changes to the election's laws in a special sitting. In a record 30 minutes, Jubilee lawmakers passed the contentious amendments after their counterparts in the opposition walked out, claiming they had been harassed and intimidated inside the plenary. There was also a heavy security cordon around Parliament. We saw today the Speaker of the National Assembly being escorted by armed police in the procession to the chamber. It has never happened anywhere in any civilized democracy. It has never happened anywhere in the Commonwealth to which we belong. In September, both houses of parliament passed the election laws without changes. The top leadership in both government and the opposition whipped members to adopt the laws unchanged. This followed bloody confrontations between the police and the opposition supporters. The clergy, civil society, business community and foreign missions prevailed upon the top leadership in government and opposition to have a joint parliamentary select committee that drafted the election laws. The laws were to ensure next year's polls are free, transparent and credible. The Therefore, we call on Jubilee to exercise a sense of patriotism and consider this country is bigger, more important than all of us, political players. The Amani National Congress, together with the Independence Party Kano, equally opposed the changes. Let us have the citizens' arrest 
of those who want to violate the Constitution of Kenya. Let us have the citizens' arrest of those who want to perpetuate corruption in this country. NASA is a citizen's movement. And NASA must arrest impunity in this country. Anataka kuiba kura acha niwaambie ile 2012 kuna watu milioni mbili waliopiga kura wanakapigia rais peke yake hawajui senator hawajui governor na ni watu milioni mbili hao watu wanaishi wapi huh? it is still not clear whether the amendments will be forwarded to the senate for concurrence senators have in the past been bypassed in the making of laws that affect county governments Patrick Amimo KTN news and on our big queue tonight, we're asking you whether you support the call for mass action by the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy to oppose the amendments on electoral laws. Do you support Cord's push for mass action to oppose the amendments to the electoral laws? Tweet us, KTN News, KTN Kenya, at KTN, at Sophia Wanuna rather, or you can send a message, double two one double five. We'd love to hear from you tonight. The Kenya Conference of Catholic Bishops, Catholic Justice and Peace is asking President Uhuru Kenyatta not to sign the amendments into law and give dialogue a chance. In a statement signed by Chair of the Commission, Bishop Cornelius Corrid of the Eldoret Diocese, the bishops observed that the amendments went against the reform spirit of the Joint Parliamentary Select Committee that was chaired by Senators Kiraitu Murungi and James Orengo. They also observed that barring the media from covering the proceedings had set a bad precedence in the August House. The bishops also want dialogue among politicians when engaging in any electoral process. Now, Jubilee MPs in the National Assembly forcefully passed amendments to the electoral laws amid protests from opposition court MPs in a dramatic session that took less than 30 minutes in a special seating that had been gazetted to run from 9.30 a.m. in the morning, of course, till midnight. Now, as Duncan Hamber reports, there was total media blackout with parliamentary reporters being denied access to the press gallery. Unlike on Tuesday when the previous special sitting ended in disarray, Thursday saw the security doubled, both within and without parliament. This is said to have followed directives from Wednesday's Jubilee Party Parliamentary Group meeting at State House that all proposed amendments be passed by all means necessary. A stand that saw members of parliament engage in heated exchanges leading to a scaffold on the floor of the house that saw code MPs storm out of parliament protesting. We have information that yesterday at the Kamkunji they held at State House, members of Jubilee were instructed to use the most lethal and unreasonable force against our members. Jubilee came to debate. We never even got to the substance of the debate. We, I see that one of us has a clip of what has just happened in there, so we are going to share, I'm going to ask her to share it with the media. Since they are not allowing media coverage, and uh, we uh, can't accept that, we decided to walk out because I was informed by a friend in the Jubilee side that guns were being aimed at us. But as they protested at the media center, the Jubilee members were busy passing the amendments in a session that was in camera after denying reporters access to the gallery and ensuring no live broadcast took place until the tail end. Maybe your fingerprints were okay. The amendments passed include empowering IEBC to employ an alternative mechanism for identification and transmission of election results in the event of technological failure and pushing the requirement that candidates for MP or MCA positions should have degrees to apply during the 2022 elections, among other amendments.
The entire session took less than 20 minutes and shortly after 10 a.m. The Jubilee Brigade emerged, chanting after pushing through the amendments. We want to tell the country in a very clear and certain terms that Kenyans will go to the polls on 8th of August 2017. Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, Joyce Laboso, dismissed claims that MPs were armed while inside the chambers but said the fiasco was uncalled for. The only issue is when he asked that it, uh, we, he was putting the question for us to recommit um, the clauses that we wanted to recommit, that is at that point that um, he, uh, the, the opposition stood up when we, he put the question and um, uh, the eyes have it, and the speaker said the eyes have it, they stood up and we had now a division. It is at that point when we were preparing to do the division um, that uh, some scuffling, uh, you, know, to, to, you know, took place. And, and really for me, I want to tell Kenyans really that us as politicians, we need to give these Kenyans a break. Um, I think this country is not about just us. This country is composed of so many other people that um, really we need to tell Kenyans the truth. On the tight security, both inside and outside parliament, she says... I think a lot of what you, you see really is because of necessity. I think a lot of um, information had come out um, through the intelligence on what some of the members were doing from both sides of the, of, of the political divide. And it was important to secure everybody. This is not secured in one side of the... It was important to secure everybody. When you hear that members are planning, are, are carrying people in their vehicles, extra people, not parliamentarians, to come into parliament. And with that, parliament adjourned once again and will reconvene on 24th January 2017. A very dramatic and traumatizing day at Parliament. Against all odds, the ruling Jubilee Party has had its way in pushing for the amendments as the court team left amid protests. Duncan Hemba, KTN, Parliament. Parliamentarians from the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy today walked out of a much anticipated parliamentary session that saw amendments to the election laws passed by their Jubilee counterparts. Then President Ted walked out a change in strategy for court MPs who also lost a court case filed to declare the morning session called by Speaker Justin Muturi illegal. KTN's Timothy Otieno now reports. The security situation around the parliament was no different from the one witnessed two days ago, if not more intense. You would have thought a riot was in the offing. Members of the public barred from accessing certain areas of Nairobi, especially around Parliament Road. But the tense environment outside the chambers would amount to little inside Parliament. Round two of a much-awaited confrontation between Jubilee and opposition legislators would change trajectory when this happened. A mass walkout of members allied to the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy. The group choosing to shift tact from a parliamentary orchestrated push to have the amendment laws flop at the floor of the assembly to moving to the streets to voice their disapproval. The honorable members making some not so honorable accusations that jubilee members of parliament assaulted them with pepper spray and rifles sneaked into the chambers. Jubilee should know generally that we should not we, sh we will not be in, we, should, we will not be intimidated whatsoever. <laughs> They would walk through the rain and sunshine, chanting louder and sometimes falling silent before yet again rejuvenating their quest. They snaked their way from the parliament buildings to the Milimani law courts where they awaited a court ruling on the legality of the special seating in Parliament, a ruling that Jubilee members of Parliament claimed would have been rigged, attacking High Court Judge George Odunga. You want Judge Odunga? 
and I have said it many times. 24th of January, when we come back, I will introduce a motion to discuss you. Yes. That is a provision. We will discuss you and we will expose you. You cannot be a member of the bench and play tribal politics. That statement, however, not going down well with the Law Society of Kenya, who through their chairman, Isaac Okero, condemned Aidan Duale. The society calls this an act of intimidation and threat to the justice system. I think it is really silly that we, even, if, even with the numbers, they don't know that allowing us to debate, then we vote, they would still win uh, on the floor of the House. And win they did. Members of the Jubilee Party passing the amendments without their court counterparts. In court, the opposition would face yet another defeat. I decline to grant leave hearing to operate as a stay of the parliamentary proceedings, at least not at this stage of the proceeding. The ruling failing to declare Parliament's morning session as illegal would prompt the opposition to call for countrywide demonstrations come January even as the legislators vowed that although they had lost the battle, the war was far from over. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. Still on Marta's politics, and the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission has been stopped from awarding a tender to audit firm KPMG for the review of the voters' register. The Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court had moved to court challenging the decision to award KPMG the tender. High Court Judge George Odunga issued the order stopping the electoral agency from advertising an open KPMG tender for the audit of the voter register as per the amended election laws. Even though IBC had already put that information on its website on December the 19th, Justice Odunga ordered that the decision about the implementation of the tender award remain suspended pending the hearing and determination of the case. The ongoing doctors' strike enters its third week with no end in sight. Doctors from private facilities are now joining the strike and will be withdrawing their services every Thursday until such a time when the government implements their demands. Dr. Masi Korir now reports. It is 18 days since the doctors made good their intention to go on strike. Sadly, there is no cure in sight yet. Doctors from the Aga Khan University Hospital, Nairobi, are the new entrance as they stage a 24-hour boycott of health service delivery in one of the country's biggest private hospitals. The government has opted to sacrifice its own uh, citizens that are getting uh, health care from the public hospitals. Well, we know that most of the government officials come to, to, come to get their own health in, uh, in the private hospitals. This is as Justice Monica Mbaru referred the expected sentencing of the union officials for contempt of court back to Justice Helen Wasilwa, who she says is familiar with this matter. We are law-abiding citizens and we await court processes. Uh, we have been given a date to show up on the 10th of January um, 2016 and, uh, 2017 and uh, we shall do so. The doctors have stuck to their guns, walking from the Milimani law courts to a meeting with their colleagues from the private sector and across the country to solidify their resolve. As doctors in this country shall continue with the fight, we shall not relent until such a day that the government implements that CBA. Their counterparts in the private sector know all too well what that means to them. When a colleague suffers, you suffer in equal measures, indirectly. Number two is that we know that the CBA is a benchmark uh, within which every doctor in Kenya is going to be remunerated. So we also expect that the private institutions are going to vibrate as well at frequency. 
Meanwhile, as Kenyans head to the festive season, doctors warn on the national health care paralysis that only seems to be moving from bad to worse. For the largest referral facility, not just in Kenya, but in East and Central Africa, to be closed for 19 days, for 19 successive days, and, and, and the government still comes out and says that we do not need doctors. I think that's a very clear message to Kenyans. Are we willing to suffer the consequences? Yes. Yes. Are we willing? Yes. I don't think I have much to answer to that. Huh? As Kenyans await the festive season, it may not yet be a Merry Christmas as the talks between the government and the doctors' union seem to not yet yield any tangible result to resolve this current crisis. Yet, the new year beckons. Will it be a happy one? Dr. Masikori for KTN News, Nairobi. All right, so the selection panel for the IBC has now forwarded several names to the president, two for the position of chair and nine for the position of uh, commissioners for the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And the two that have been forwarded for the position of chair, one is Wafula Chebukati Wanyonyi. And let's have a look at some of what we now know about him. He's an advocate of the High Court with a Bachelor of Laws, LLB, from the University of Nairobi. He was admitted to the role of advocate in 1986. So 30 years uh, he has been in practice and masters in business administration from JQUART as well. Let's move on to the next candidate, nominee for chair of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries uh, Commission. Well, before we do that, another uh, two pointers there to note about Shabukati Wanyonyi. He heads the Commercial Labor and Employment Division, Landlord, Tenant, and Conveyancing and Treaties as well. Then there is Tukero Olekina, that's the other nominee that has been forwarded to the president. He's an advocate of the High Court, and as far as practice, he focuses and specializes in property, conveyancing, landlord and tenant law, also handles matters corporate law as well as consumer protection. Now, these names will be forwarded to the president. Uh, of the two, he will pick one, and the same will be forwarded to parliament, and we will see whether that candidate will be successful. And as far as the commissioners are concerned, these are the names that have been shortlisted. It's the Fanao Keo Aura, or rather forwarded, the nominees, Rosalind Kwamboka Akombe. There's also Abdi Yakub Gulia, Samuel Kimeu as well. Samuel Kimeu, remember, uh, rep for the Transparency International uh, Kenya. Paul Kibiwat Kurgat, Margaret Wanjala. Uh, Boya Molu and Consolata Maina. So out of these names, the president will be picking six, and the same will be forwarded to parliament uh, for clear, uh, clearance or lack of the same. So this is a story we'll continue to follow for you. And as far as matters elections, there's a lot happening, and that is... Uh, uh, definitely one front and as far as commissioners are concerned for the IEBC that is very important in preparing for the 2017 general election. If you're watching KTN Prime, thank you so much for staying with us. I want to remind you our big question tonight and we are asking you, do you support the call for mass action by code to oppose the amendments to the electoral laws? Send us your views at KTN News at uh, KTN Kenya. You can tweet me directly at Sophia Wanuna. And some of your views already coming in. If I could just sample one or two very quickly before we go to break. No, and Jaroge is saying, no, it's childish and stupid considering the upcoming election. Why can't they fight for the price of Unga? Moz Masina, you say, yes, I support because the government in place is taking us for granted. They sat and passed the law together. Why change it now? Humphrey Miyoge, you say, if diplomacy fails, mass action becomes the alternative. Concerned Kenyan, you tweet, I would not use words like a tweet. If I was uh, the people working in parliament, I would say this is a scam. Godfrey Congo, yes. Why did they switch the TVs for people to migrate to analog? And you still remember that. And many more of your views that I'll continue to sample right here on KTN Prime. So keep them coming. Stay with us after these few messages. We'll be back with more news.
Welcome back to the KTN Prime Bulletin. Let's continue with the news. And the IEBC has added its voice to the ongoing standoff regarding the burning of IFES by the Jubilee government. The electoral body says that it is shocked by the government's attacks on the support that IFES is giving to the 2017 general election. The U.S. government has since told off the administration about their burning of civic education and the partners implementing it. Tuingiliwe na inchi zingine wakituambia wana tusomesha sijui civic education at injisi ya kupi. Wakenya wanajua kupiga kura. This statement by President Uhuru Kenyatta during Jamhuri Day celebrations barely two weeks ago and a consequent termination of a two billion shilling civic education program run by a U.S. organization, IFES, continues to attract reactions from the country and the U.S. The latest reaction now comes from the Interim Electoral and Boundaries Commission that has described as shocking Jubilee's ban of IFES together with its civic education activities. IBC has pledged to engage the government in talks over the same. The United States continues to deny allegations by the government that it is meddling with electoral affairs of the country and that a company affiliated to them is working in the country illegally. On Monday, the NGO Coordination Board suspended the two billion civic education program and directed that all operations by the organization be stopped. IFES, however, maintains that they are duly registered with the Office of the Attorney General and the Department of Justice's Registrar of Companies in Kenya. In a statement, IFES Director of Communication and Advocacy said, and I quote, IFES has supported democratic development in Kenya since 2002 and leverages a deep understanding of the Kenyan political context to execute impactful, impartial, and relevant programming, end of quote. For an organization that has been in operation in the country since 2002, many question why the decision by the government came now, barely seven months to the general election. On her Twitter handle, U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Samantha Power, also threw her weight behind IFES, saying the Kenyan government's decision to suspend it ahead of the 2017 polls was a warning sign. Here in Kenya, six civil society agencies released a statement terming as worrying the government's stand on IFES, claiming that it was a continuation of the smear campaign against the civil society in the country. The relationship between the government and the civil society has not been particularly a good one from the onset of the Jubilee administration. In December 2014, over 50 non-governmental organizations were outlawed, a decision that was reversed by the courts. Sharon Momani, KTN News. Welcome back in business news tonight. Property rates remain the greatest challenge in county revenue collection, with most county governments issuing biannual amnesties to property owners to encourage them to comply with the law. Now, to fix this, the Kenya Revenue Authority has now partnered with counties to collect property taxes and single business permits fees on behalf of the county. The first is a partnership with Kiambu County that will enable the county government to use KRA's iTax platform to make payments through more mobile money and bank transfers. This includes a joint enforcement approach by both KRA and Kiambu County, thereby making it very difficult for defaulters to operate undetected. The second phase will entail payment and billing of property rates to the ITAC system. Kiambu County was in the last financial year shy by 800 million shillings on its ITAC collection targets. We then have been graduating this in terms of realizing how important it is to work together. We then have appointed county governments, like all other institutions in the country, as agents to collect on behalf of government. We have uh, um, declared an amnesty on penalties and interest of rate, rates that are outstanding. And this will only run for 30 days. So I want the members of the public to take advantage. 
The very first Internet of Things forum is coming to Africa for the first time and will be hosted in South Africa with the hope of opening up new opportunities for governments, companies and consumers in the ICT industry. The forum will bring together senior information technology executives, service providers and technology solutions, bidders from diverse fields with representation in healthcare, manufacturing, energy utilities among a stream of practitioners technology players are banking africa being the next frontier championed by south africa kenya and nigeria to showcase the latest technologies and solutions and top into the virgin market During the festive season, tourism players put their best foot forward to satisfy visitors from around the world looking to bask in the beauty of Kenya's sandy beaches, game drives, and a chance to enjoy the country's diverse food and culture. But an American entrepreneur has caught the attention of visitors with a special package of community service and social responsibility. Her clients spare a day of their trip to interact with the underprivileged. This group of women from the United States booked a holiday to Kenya, looking forward to a chance to enjoy the East African nation's diverse food, culture, and serene tourism attraction. But their holiday also included a special package, a day of community service. The itinerary was put together by Jelani, an organization seeking to empower girls and women through cultural enrichment and volunteering. CEO and founder of Jelani Ashley Company has been running the program for over three years. Touring different parts of Kenya from Mombasa to Masai Mara and then we're here in Nairobi to come to Kibera um, and, and do our service project. These women are professional women who have a heart for service and so they want to dedicate one of their vacation days to serving young people. Proceeds from the vacation also go towards educating and uplifting girls facing similar challenges around the world. Along with giving financial support and donations, the women from Jelani hold open discussions with the girls, mostly around self-esteem and self-worth. Today, I've learned that I should always be courageous and also give myself an I can do attitude. I, I should always be positive, knowing that I can do each and everything if I'm willing to. Today I've really had fun. I've learned to believe in myself and to stay positive no matter what challenges I go through. For many young girls from poor backgrounds, messages of reassurance and self-empowerment can be neglected amidst other basic needs like food, shelter and education. So this is my first time um, and to actually go to East Africa and visit a place that I've often heard negative things about, this is amazing because it's changing my perception and I'm absolutely ecstatic to be here. Kibera is the largest slum in Nairobi and Africa's oldest and largest urban slum located just five kilometers from the city center. Slum tourism is increasingly popular here and international celebrities are a regular sight. team Harambe Stars retained their previous position to end the year ranked 89 according to the latest FIFA World Rankings. This position is a slight improvement to the 101 position the national team held on the 208th nation table at the start of the year. In the Sekafa region, Kenya is second to Africa Cup of Nations bound Uganda cranes who are ranked 72nd. In third place is Rwanda at 92nd, whilst Ethiopia is placed 112. In what has been a low-key month, most countries retained their positions, with only nine of 54 countries within the confederations of African football registering a rise or fall of more than one. Argentina end the year on top of the world with neighbors Brazil in second position. Kenya Retired Athletes have today launched the Kenya Retired Athletes Association Welfare in Nairobi. 
an association which aims to advocate for the well-being and rights of the retired athletes in the country. The association has also vowed to be in the front line of promoting peace in Kenya through sporting initiatives by traversing the 47 counties and collaborating with the youth and their persons living with disabilities in their activities. However, the chairperson of the association, Vitalis Emurian, has reiterated that the formation of the association is not meant to compete with Athletics Kenya as mandate, nor is it supposed to compete with other athletics bodies in the country. It's not a politics. It is not thinking about how to change or to remove the officials from the AK. But this is just to create awareness of the, those euros who have been forgotten. Tungataka kuona watu hawa tunatemberea hawa na kuona vile watoto hawa wanaka. Nikiona welfare ya kama hii itakuwa ikitemberea wenye riadha wote hata hawale wengine wote waliletea nchi yetu Kenya Shiva. Tukiona vile tutaweza kuona waonekane na, wa, na ile mashida wako naye wasaidio kwa to the call for mass action by the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy, which is to oppose the amendments on electoral laws that mass action set to begin on 4th of January next year. 52% of you say yes, you support. 40% you say no. 8% don't care. A few of your thoughts, Collins Kemboy, you say Kenyans are tired of unnecessary mass action. I am Lamol, you say, unfortunately, most of those who say they don't care will be the first ones to carry machetes after elections. Huntington, you uh, post, I strongly support that. Brian, I'm not for any coalition. Another, Cheriota RK, I'm not supporting Huruto, Huruto either, and neither am I supporting Cord. And then Peter Mukunzi, demos to me is wrong move. 80% of Kenya's services run on electronic platform. Past law is bad. Uh, to a digital age. Anthony Mukoya, the term free and fair election is defined differently by these politicians. Evans Kamonde, mass action is the only language Duala and his cohorts understand. Peter Ungongo, it's due to the president and his deputy chest thumping. Victor Sang, no, we all know technology ch technological challenges. Why do banks maintain manual withdrawals even with ATMs mobile? You pose the question. And many more of your views. We definitely appreciate you taking the time to tweet in and send in a message in response to our big queue tonight. On behalf of the team, it was great having your company with us. My name is Sophia Wanuna. But before we go... Tonight, we begin our two-part investigative series that will take you at least four years back to the intrigues of the 2013 general election. KTN has uncovered startling flaws and failures whose impacts on the election the country will perhaps never know. From missing tallying forms, inflated results in some areas, and evidence of a commission with a divided leadership. It is an intriguing story that once again has exposed the soft underbelly of Kenya's electoral system. We'll leave you with that story tonight. Enjoy the rest of your viewing and have a blessed night.